Hello, my name is Kate Guthrie Caruso, and I'm the scientist from RG MOOC headquarters, Rhetoric and Composition, the Persuasive Power of Video Games as Paratext. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a training on the basic rules for paper writing, common errors in formal writing. For many of you, this will probably seem like a review. Um, I'm covering some basic concepts. But when we move from uh, more casual writing into formal writing, we want to remind ourselves of the conventions that exist there, especially because at our GMOOC headquarters, we are writing collaborative papers that will eventually be published as examples of academic writing. We want to make sure that we start to take our papers um, and our, our writing skills into that academic realm. All right, so the first thing I want to cover is titles in MLA format. There are essentially two types of titles that you'll encounter, um, and those are what I call short titles and long titles. What I do not mean by a short title, it, do, it can be many, many words long, okay? What I mean is that the, the piece itself is short in breadth, okay? Um, a long title, again, um, I don't mean a number of words. What I mean is that it is a longer piece, and it usually contains um, multiple sections within it, so chapters or articles or something like that. So, four short titles first, okay? Generally, they're part of a larger whole, um, and these you would always put in quotation marks, okay? So, articles, poems, blog entry titles, um, because we're playing video games, if you were talking about a specific chapter in a longer video game, um, or a specific level that is named, then those would go into quotation marks. Okay, so for example, in this sentence, in Joseph Butler Hartley's Art Gaming and First Person Emotions, he points out that games can provoke particular emotions in people that other art forms cannot. Emotions I'm going to fittingly call first person emotions, feelings like personal triumph or guilt. Okay, so in this sentence, um, the um, title is actually an article. Okay, it's, it's part of a website. So um, that's the part of the larger whole, so that, that helps us uh, realize that it's an article, okay? Um, and that would go into quotation marks. So I've highlighted it right here in pink for you, okay? This one also contains a quotation mark um, for those of you that need a review of MLA formatting. Um, for in-text citations, please see my previous video, um, but I have cited this correctly. I also gave you the direct link in case you wanted to go there. That is not an MLA format. Okay, so for those long titles then, okay, long titles means they contain multiple works or chapters, um, and they should be formatted in italics. Okay, so game titles, this is one of the most common errors I've been seeing. Uh, website names, blog titles, books, newspapers, anything of that sort is going to be going into italics. Okay, so for example, the game Samarist 1 is a point-and-click adventure game that challenges its audience to complete logic-based puzzles in order to progress through each level. While well, Samarist 1 is the name of a video game um, that we have played in this course, I'll give you the link really quick in case you want to go to it, um, and so therefore it goes in italics. Please note that we only put um, titles using MLA format in either quotation marks or italics. We do not underline them, we don't bold them, we don't change the font, anything like that, okay? We want to keep it very simple for our audience to understand. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is the Oxford comma. Um, and because, especially because we have some international students, there's some debate um, internationally as well as within the United States of what, how to use, if you should use the Oxford comma. Okay, so first let's define it. The Oxford comma refers to the comma before the coordinating conjunction, usually and or or, in a list of three or more. So it's that last comma before the last item in that list. Okay. Um, so um, in this um, sentence, um, I played Samarist 1, Baby Blues, and Extruder this week. Okay, the Oxford comma is the comma right here. Okay, in between blues and and, and what that is doing is it is simply separating out and causing us to pause as readers. There has been some debate, um, and internationally I know that there are different rules um, as to whether the Oxford comma should be used 
newspapers in the United States, for instance, um, frequently do not use the Oxford comma um, because they're trying to save space. However, for academic writing, most scholars agree that it should be used. Here's the reason. Without the Oxford comma, you risk confusing your audience and changing the meaning of your sentence. So let me give you an example. Okay. So sitting at the bar were two prostitutes, Al Gore and George Bush. In this sentence, um, without that Oxford comma, which would go right here in between Al Gore and the and, um, what this sentence reads as is that Al Gore and George Bush are those two prostitutes, instead of meaning to say that there are four people sitting at the bar, the two prostitutes and then Al Gore and George Bush completely different meanings in the sentence. You want to be very careful. Alright, the next thing um, that is very important for formal writing is not using contractions. Okay, um, so first defining it, a contraction is defined by Wikipedia is a shortened version of the written and spoken forms of a word, syllable, or word group created by omission of a term internal letters and it's often joined by an apostrophe but not always okay um, so words like can't don't won't and were are all examples of contractions now this is really um, important because when we speak we frequently use contractions and most writing that's published on the internet um, and blogs um, newspapers etc do use contractions but when we take our writing into the the level of academic formal writing we want to make sure that we take on a more formal tone and so we want to separate those out okay so um, we want to take them out we'll spell out the word or words instead okay so can't then becomes cannot don't becomes do not won't becomes will not and were becomes we are okay so go through your papers and look for any apostrophes that you might have and make sure that you are not putting in contractions accidentally this is one of my weakest points because I write on the internet as well as writing um, formal papers so I always have to do a special proofread just for these contractions Okay, so possessive apostrophes, this leads us right into this because the next place you would see an apostrophe in your paper is for possessive. So a word is possessive if that noun possesses something in the sentence. Okay, only nouns and pronouns can be possessive. Possessives are the only place an apostrophe should show up in a formal sentence or in a formal paper. Okay, and some possessive words do not have apostrophes. With the English language, they just become ones that you'll have to memorize, okay? They're exceptions to the rule. So words like there and its are both possessive words, okay? Um, they're possessive pronouns, in fact, and um, of course, um, they do not have the apostrophes in them. Its is a particularly tricky one, which we'll come to because um, the apostrophe is a contraction. Okay, so um, here are a couple of examples. They walked to Sarah's house. Simple sentence, Sarah is the subject, owns the house, right? Okay, um, and so that um, apostrophe would go right after the H, apostrophe S. Here's another one. In Cass's article, he points out that, and then I'd continue my sentence. Okay, Cass is the author that I formally, or that I mentioned earlier. Um, in this instance, because this, the, the word ends with an S, um, we actually don't need apostrophe S, we just put an apostrophe. Okay, so this is true of any plural word that is possessing. So if I'm talking about, I don't know, um, five, you know, the five donuts sprinkles, again, the apostrophe would go outside of the S. What this indicates is there's a, basically a silent S right after there. Um, but we don't want to be repetitive. Okay. So some common errors. Making a plural word possessive is probably the most common. Okay. So John runs to the store. Well, runs does not possess anything. Okay. Um, and so it is also not a noun. 
okay? So we know that it, it cannot be possessive, okay? So we'd fix it and say John runs to the store. Okay, next, complete sentences. Uh, we wanna make sure that we are writing in formal complete sentences, and this applies to both formal writing and informal writing. Okay, the only time that you may use an incomplete sentence is if you wanted it really for emphasis, but you want to be very careful with this, especially in academic writing. Okay, so a complete sentence consists of a subject, a verb, an action that the subject is performing, and these two together create an independent clause, okay, usually. Um, as long as they're not joined by a, a subordinating conju conjunction, and I'm going to cover that in just a minute. Okay. Some sentences in the form of a command have an implied subject of you. So, for instance, a sentence like, sit down, well, the subject is implied that you are the subject, and so that is still a complete independent clause. It is a complete sentence. Okay. So, um, a complete sentence, the gamer in every day the same dream, experiences the monotony of working life. Okay, the subject in this sentence is the gamer, and the gamer does what? Okay, the verb that applies to the gamer is that they experience it. Okay, so I do have a complete independent clause here. All right, so some common issues. Um, the major one that I see is that you are only writing a subordinating clause, okay? And a subordinating clause has uh, what's called a subordinating conjunction, okay? So these are some, some signal words to us, okay? So some common subordinating conjunctions, although there are many, many, many. So if you have a question about it, you can look this up further on the internet. Um, after, although, as, because, before, if, then, that, though, if, when, where, wall. Okay, all of these um, indicate and indicate that it is a subordinating conjunction. They are subordinating conjunctions, and then they they create that um, that part as it becomes an incomplete sentence, cannot stand alone. Okay, um, so it's a subordinate clause, and it must then be combined together with an independent clause. Okay, so um, a common um, example here. Okay of an incomplete sentence, when I played the game, which? Okay, um, I still have a subject, I, and a verb, played. However, because of the subordinating conjunction, when, um, I've created a subordinate clause. It is an incomplete thought, an incomplete sentence. Okay, so I must join that, okay, by adding an independent clause to it. So when I played the game, which, I had nightmares that night. Okay, which is, for those of you that haven't played, it's a horror game. It's pretty scary. I wouldn't play it after like 2 a.m. Okay. Um, so, I had nightmares that night is an independent clause. What that means is it is in itself a complete sentence. Okay. Um, the subject again is I and the verb had. Okay. So, when I combine those two together, then I have a complete thought, a complete sentence. Okay. Using I in an academic paper. I've covered this previously in some past videos, but in case you're not watching all of them, I wanted to cover this really quickly. Okay. Um, in most cases, I should be avoided in a formal academic paper. Here's why. Okay. It creates fluff in your paper, and you don't want to have fluff, okay? because the more wordy your paper is, the less likely people are to tune in and, l and listen to your argument. Okay. The audience already assumes you are writing your opinion. Okay. So what using I generally does is it makes you sound unsure and like you're not an expert. What you're trying to do is, is make them convince them so you never want to come off sounding unsure in your paper. Okay. And this weakens your argument overall. Okay. So some common pitfalls of using I. Um, you'll create announcements, okay? So such as, in this paper, I will argue. The purpose of this essay is, okay? Those can be just completely taken out. Instead of telling me what you're gonna argue, just argue it, okay? Instead of telling me the purpose of the essay, show that, okay? 
um, what this does is it creates a wordy um, paper. Okay, apologies do the same thing. So things like I think, I believe, in my opinion, they basically make you sound unsure. Don't tell us that you think it. Tell it that tell us that it is so, and then go on to prove that. Okay, remember you are writing argumentative papers, and so your goal is to prove something to your audience. Anything like I think takes away a lot of your ethos, okay, or your credibility as a writer. All right, so finally, when can I use I in a paper, uh, an academic paper? You absolutely can in certain instances, and that is personal narrative or anecdotal examples, okay? If you actually did something and you're relating that experience, then by all means use I. Um, it will allow the reader to connect to you and it will tie, uh, create some pathos in your writing, some emotional connection, okay? Um, but do make sure that you don't fall into an announcement or an apology when you are, are telling your narrative or your anecdote. All right, so finally, some commonly confused words. Um, these I'm seeing misused quite frequently online, in textbooks even, when they're not caught by copy editors. I myself confuse them occasionally when I'm writing very quickly. So you wanna make sure you do a quick proofread. So these are some of the ones that I've been seeing. There, there, and there, okay? There, with the apostrophe RE as a contraction, and you should write it out as they are. You should never have that one in there, so that's an easy test to make sure it's correct in your paper. There with the IR is possessive, okay? Their house, they own the house, okay? And finally, there is a reference to the place. This is with the ERE, okay? The easiest way that I remember this, if, if I'm having trouble, is that the final one here has here in the word, okay? So you know that that one has to do with place, We've gotten rid of the contraction. You can figure out which one's possessive from there. Okay, it's and it's. Mentioned this earlier, okay? It's without the apostrophe is the possessive, okay? So it's house, let's say we're talking about a mouse instead of a person, so we usually call animals it, okay? Um, then it becomes possessive. It's with the apostrophe is the contraction for it is. So you should never have it's with an apostrophe in a formal paper. Your, your, and your. The last one is not really a common error, but I thought I'd throw it in there. Okay. Your with the um, O-U-R is possessive. Okay. And with the apostrophe R-E, again, is a contraction for you are. So make sure that you can distinguish the two. The final one, tales of your, really that's times past. I don't know that I've ever seen that in a paper, but I thought I'd throw it in there. Okay, um, all right, just a couple more. I'm not gonna go in as much depth. Which and which, make sure you know which one is, you know, the, the pointy hat at which, um, the one with supernatural powers, um, and which one we will more frequently use in academic writing, which is the W-H-I-C-H, -H, okay? And that's determining between two things or more things. All right, weather and weather. One refers to the weather outside and one is talking about a choice, okay? Make sure you have them clear. Effect and effect, okay? Um, these are very confusing. Um, and you want to make sure that you're using them correctly. Okay, and of course there's so many others. Um, I don't have time to talk about all of them, but just make sure you're proofreading your work so you don't end up saying something you didn't mean to say. Um, it can be very embarrassing, and sometimes it can actually change the meaning of your sentence. So make sure you're proofreading. All right. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to contact me. Um, you can contact me at Twitter at Writer Carr or at my Gmail account, KateCaruso09. Thank you very much. Take care.